question. Here we go. So uh, 12.7, when we're looking at 12.7, we're looking at what are called solids of revolution. Solids of revolution. If you think back to when we did uh, rotations back in chapter four, we had rotational symmetry, right? Where you can turn it a certain number of degrees and it looks the same. It's that same sort of idea, but three dimensional. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing now is we're going to take a two dimensional figure. We're going to take a two dimensional figure. We're going to rotate it around a line and create a three dimensional figure. Okay, so we got a little bit of vocab here and some pictures that kind of show what we are doing today. These are only two vocab words here. So we're talking about solids of revolution. And again, three-dimensional figure formed by rotating, rotating a two-dimensional shape around an axis. I call it a line, they call it an axis. The same. The line around which the shape is rotated is called the axis of revolution. So that's that line down the middle. We're going to take that two-dimensional figure. We are going to rotate it around. And you see that picture here, right? We start with a rectangle. And if we rotate that rectangle around, and again, it's one of those visualization things, right? Spatial awareness that some of us just comes easier than others. If we're going to take that rectangle and we are going to rotate it around, swing it around that line, that axis, and see what shape it's going to form. It's going to form a cylinder in this case. So that's what we're looking at here. We're going to look at a few different types of shapes that can be formed by using this axis of revolution and rotating our 2D figure around. What type of shapes do you think we will be able to create by doing this? What's another type of shape other than a cylinder? Jackson, you know, we can make a cone, right? What two dimensional shape would we be rotating to create a cone? Either a right triangle. A right triangle would create that cone. If it's not a right triangle, it's not going to give us a cone. So that's good that you were very specific about it. We rotate that around, we're going to get a cone. Okay, what other shapes do you think? And we'll look at some examples actual examples rather than just a drawing. Okay. We can do a sphere. What what two-dimensional shape would I put on there for a sphere? Yeah, semicircle. So if I have that axis of revolution and I draw in a semicircle there, pretend that's an actual circle. If I rotate that all the way around, yeah, that's going to give us a sphere. Is there anything else that you can think of? Could we have composite figures? Yeah, probably, since I'm asking about it. What if I had a trapezoid? If I rotate that, what composite figure? Talk first and ask you, what would that composite figure look like? A house. It's a circle with a house. The house from Little. I used to watch that every day. Yes. What was that? It was like on the little something on the prairie. Little house on the prairie. Yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, wait. that's old school. You watched it? Yeah. That's like eighties. I know. She my is mom would turn so. it off. Like. Laura Ingalls. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so somebody describe what shape did we just form here? Jackson. Cylinder. There you go. Cylinder with the cone on top. Because we've got those two things. We've got the rectangle and we've got the triangle here combined. That's going to give us a cylinder here with a cone on top and give us something like that. All right? When we start rotating. What's one shape? What's a shape that we cannot get by doing this? What's something that, raise your hand, what's something that we could not create by doing this, right? Like a square, okay? How about a three dimensional shape? A cube. We can't get a cube. Can we get a prism at all? No. Polyhedron. We can't have a polyhedron because 
by nature of spinning it around that axis of revolution, something's going to be curved. The whole thing's going to be curved, right? So there's a very limited number of things that we can create here because it has to be curved. So none of those polyhedrons are going to be formed. It's going to be cylinders. It's going to be cones. It's going to be spheres, some combination of them. Okay, that's what we're looking at. All right, so now let's look at the types of questions that we're gonna run into. Okay, so they give us two examples here. It says to sketch the solid produced by rotating the figure around the given axis. We're gonna to try to draw in three dimensions a little bit. Okay, and it's not gonna be you know, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. Don't worry about it. But we're going to sketch the solid produced by rotating the figure on the axis. And then it says identify and describe the solid. So identify is what shape is it? Describe the solid means give me the dimension of it. So I see a rectangle with four and nine. Once you're done, you're going to tell me what three dimensional shape has been formed. And then what are the dimensions of that shape? Right? What are the nine and four represent on that shape? So go ahead and talk to somebody about it, write it down, whatever you need to. What 3D figure, and then describe it. And try to sketch it out. Try to sketch it out. And see what, what we can do. Why would the radius be two? Why would the radius be two? Because it's going to be a cube, right? It's like a circle Once you're done, show somebody your beautiful drawing. Orange t-shirt. Me too. I'm drawing that so one's there. Uh, yeah. All right, that's what I got. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, first of all, what type, raise your hand, what type of shape are we forming here? What are we going to form? Cylinder. And what? Dimensions are we going to have? How can we describe that on radius of four and nine? There you go. Radius of four, height of nine. Right. Okay. So if we go to sketch that, right, and you kind of saw what I did with the, the cylinder and the cone, you just kind of want to do a nice little oval there. That was terrible. That's the bagel. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Done. Just kidding. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? And we can always put some dashes on it to show that that's behind. Maybe it's really just not good. That's all right. And I'm better when it's vertical. Hey, uh, what about for our second one? What do we have there? Is a cone? What dimensions do we have? There you go. Three unit radius, five unit height. That's a little bit better. There's your pump. Okay. Good deal. Okay. So they are going to ask you that. They're going to ask you what those dimensions are. All right. Just be able to visualize it and uh, kind of give them what. See, that drawing looks exactly like that. See, look at that. It's almost exact. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. The cone, not as much. Not as much. And I thought the cone was better. Shows you what I know. All right. Um, let's look at this question down here. Question is what does not belong 
Like that's not one of these things, it's not like the others, right? Talk to somebody, which one doesn't belong in life? Yeah, I agree. Just I see obviously all right so yes there are a lot of answers that you could come up with for which one doesn't belong like the party hat's the only one you wear on your head yes. but in terms of what we're talking about today which one doesn't belong the party which one? What's up? Thank you. Why? There you go. Doesn't have an axis of revolution. We can create these three by doing our solace of revolution. We cannot create that because it's how it's equal. Okay. So those first three that we have, that's kind of what we're getting into next. Is not looking at just that two-dimensional shape and then creating the three. We're going to go the other way. And we're going to say, and this picture is giant. Oh. We're going to say, here's this shape. What two dimensional figure could we create or, or could we use around an axis of revolution to create this three dimensional object? Okay. When we do this, all we're doing, right? All we're doing is we are cutting it exactly in half. And there's our shape. That's it. You cut it exactly in half and you draw half of it. That's the shape that you're going to use for that solid revolution. Okay, so whatever they give you, you're going to cut it in half. And that's going to give you that big, right? We could take that blue outline, rotate it around. We're going to get that giant face. Okay. So same thing with those three that we just looked at here, right? We would cut them in half, cut it in half. There you go. Cut that in half, a little more stuff going on on this one. But there you go, cut it in half. There you go, that was terrible. But there you go, right? Here's your solids of rubber. All right, uh, last thing, last thing here. So kind of going back to what we did the first time, but they're going to ask a little bit more of it. They're going to say, all right, sketch and describe the three-dimensional figure, the solid revolution. We can do that, right? We know what shape that's going to create. But then it is going to ask you to find the surface area and volume, okay? Volume should be no problem because we just learned about volume of a cylinder. And spoiler alert, this is a cylinder. But then in terms of surface area, that's where our orange sheet comes in. We got surface area right here, okay? So we can use that formula. All we need to know is the height and the radius, and we can do it, okay? So that's the sort of thing you are gonna see, I think three of these types of questions on the homework. Um, so just know if you are at home, if for some reason you don't finish in class, you're at home and you need that formula, just look it up online somewhere and find that formula. Okay? Because I know we haven't talked about this. Okay. Any questions about solids of revolution? All right. 